welcome. As you may remember, if you've looked at these videos, I've been living with a Power Mac G4 Sawtooth as my primary computer for the last week. I will, of course, be making um, a video concerning the results of this grand experiment. Uh, I don't know exactly when it will come out. I do have round two of my oral surgery tomorrow. It's too bad. Things are just starting to feel much more normal now, but there you go. Uh, anyhow, I did realize that if I were to put in everything that I had been thinking of into that one video, it would be much too long, which is probably going to be anyway. So I'm going to separate out a couple of clips here as independent videos. Uh, the first is going to be the process that one goes through in order to watch YouTube videos at all on this machine. The machine does have 10.4 Fox in its configuration specifically for the uh, 7400 uh, G4 processors. It does open most web pages. Uh, I'll give it credit. Uh, there are problems with YouTube in particular. Now, one of the things suggestions made about websites is to make what they were calling a Fox box, which is a separate instance of 104 Fox slaved to one particular website. So I have done that. And that's this icon here. Uh, the OS, we're we'll booting into Tiger right now, sees that as a separate application. All right now, I'm going to open Activity Monitor. Uh, and there's a good reason for this. I've just restarted, so we see most of the RAM is available there. Uh, I tend to avoid running Activity Monitor, but I do find that it is helpful in terms of dealing. Okay, so, see in here, this is called YouTube Box. We'll click on that and open it up. Now, if you look over at the CPU usage, bang, 84% and down to 72, 57, 60, it, generally it's very, very high. 84, 81, this poor thing is really struggling to make this happen. YouTube will open up. One simply must be patient. We're up to 90% CPU usage now. People who know me would tell you I am a patient man, and believe me, that patience has been sorely tested. Okay, it's opening up just really, really slowly. Ninety-three percent, ninety-two percent on the CPU usage. Still doing okay on the RAM. Although the virtual memory size is, is pretty big. Okay! it's very gradually starting to look like YouTube. Now, I, I keep the activity monitor open here. I want to keep an eye on the CPU percentage. When it starts to go down, that's when I'll, I'll try doing something. The instant I try to do anything, even scrolling, uh, through the page, the CPU uh, percentage will go leaping up again at 59. We're down from where we were. I at least want it to get under 50. Now nope, we're back at past 78. Oh, uh, yeah, that's probably that, that video up there in the upper left trying to load.
things all are playing are murder. Now, one thing I'm going to do is mute the system. Because that's the way YouTube is. The, the videos will just start to play. Do I really need to see an ad about Justin Bieber? Good gracious Lord. All right. Still at 58, 59. I shall take pity on you. I'm going to try clicking on my history because I, I ah the spinning beach ball. You have to learn to appreciate the spinning beach ball. If you like the spinning beach ball, you're going to have a great time with this computer, and I strongly recommend it. Okay, so we're once again going to uh, attempt to watch one of my videos just because I know I own the rights to that and there will be no problem doing so. We're at 89, 91% CPU usage. Before I try to open it up, I want it to drop down. Okay, there's a drop. Nope, back up again. All kinds of things loading in the background. The little activity line in 10 for Fox is helpful too. You can get an idea of what it's trying to do as it chews up all of the CPU. You can forget multitasking, particularly multitasking while trying to watch YouTube. This cannot be done. Uh, not on this machine. Oh, we're still up in the 90s. See, I would often step away from the machine and do something else, but I don't want to leave you hanging here. I also want to give you a bit of an idea of what it's like, but good gracious Lord. Now give me a little bit of the CPU back. I know it's only 450 megahertz, and it's like 21 years old, but <laughs> just give me a little to work with. Well, let's see if I try to move the mouse. I'm down into the 80s, 78, okay, okay. Back up to 86, back up to 92. 83, 86. All right, I'm going to click on the video. Now, hopefully if it gets to the point now that it's just trying to load this one video, we'll have a little bit more success. All right. Now, of course, it, it auto plays, and that's murder. I, I mean, I disabled the autoplay where it just keep playing video after video. That that kills it very quickly. But right now the video is trying to play. I muted the system sound because the system sound would... the sound actually comes through. All right. Now the question is what 77 percent CPU usage. 118. How does it get up over a hundred percent using the CPU? Is this the definition of overclocking? I don't know. Okay, down to 65. Now, what I'm going to hope is that we're able to pause the video at this point. Okay, good. The video is paused. Now, can I bring it back to the beginning? Video is not paused. Try again. Okay, now the video's paused. Okay, good. We're at the beginning. We may be ready for playback. So I'm turning the system sound back on. It looks from the progress bar that most of the uh, 
video has loaded. Now this is only slightly over two minutes. Uh, and good, I, I can see that when I hover over the settings, it is showing settings. Um, if you keep trying to stay in this over and over for long periods of time, uh, where the cursor appears and what's actually being selected starts to drift apart with intriguing uh, possibilities. Okay, uh, I'm nostalgic about this. I think it's a fun little video and a fun little tune. Uh, what's nostalgic about it? My much beloved late wife makes an appearance here as we play music on a Sunday afternoon together. This was uh, just about five years ago. Okay, let's try it. settings down to 144p. It's, it's as low as it will go. But for a music video, the sound does come up. stop itself. Uh, yep, very good. It actually seemed to be catching up a little bit as you went towards the end there. All right, now from here I could click here and go back to the home page, or I could simply go back to where I was, which would go back to my history. However, the, the controls for back, forward, home, uh, which would be the the YouTube main page, uh, reload, etc., are all there under the box drop down in, in the menu bar. Uh, that took some getting used to. I kept looking for it in the browser window, which is where it would usually be, uh, and it just isn't there. But it actually works pretty well. However, what I find is if I want to continue and watch other videos, the best thing to do not restart, but quit the Fox box and then start it again. If I keep watching video after video after video, it pretty much degrades. Uh, and we've got our CPU back, everything there, so we're good. All right, so that's <laughs> video on a Sawtooth G4 on YouTube. Uh, now, there's going to be another clip on here, so hang on in just a second. We'll come back for that. All right, we're going to do a speed test here, uh, copying a folder to a couple of flash drives. Now, in terms of <clears throat> connectivity for external drives, uh, this machine 
is equipped with two built-in USB 1.1 ports as well as two built-in Firewire 400 ports, the first generation of an older version of Firewire. Try to get that centered a little better. Okay, uh, of the two, it is certainly true that Firewire 400 would be preferable. However, very few of us these days have got external drives that will connect to Firewire. I actually have a couple. Uh, however, with this in mind, I did, if you refer back to the upgrades video, install a PCI card, which added four USB 2 ports and two more Firewire 400 ports. If the USB 2 ports are working, the Firewire 400 would be rendered pretty much unnecessary. This test folder, according to Tiger, is about 55, 56 uh, megabytes. You may remember when I did a similar test uh, on the Mac Pro with USB 3, 3.1, and 2.0, I had folders of 25 one time, and another time I did it about 30 gigabytes. Different world of computing here. All right. Uh, when I look at the same folder on the Mac Pro with Catalina, it says more like 58 to 59 megabytes. Still, same folder, valid test. Two different flash drives. The one labeled Untitled is plugged in currently to one of those PCIe added USB 2 ports. Let's see how long this takes. Okay, I don't know if you could actually read that progress window. Uh, it literally said that it would take about 26 hours at one point, but the actual time on this small folder, now I can show it to you, 23.36 seconds. All right, so that appears to be working. Let's now, this one that is labeled Mac Flash Drive is connected to one of the built-in USB 1.1 ports. Let's see. just hit past the point that the USB 2 connected drive worked. These are two different drives, but they're pretty much identical, same manufacturer. Both formatted uh, Mac OS extended journal. I am going to let this run in real time. Uh, feel free to skip ahead if you wish, or I'll try to remember to put the results, uh, the, the speed results, into, uh, into the description at the end of this. But I thought it would be interesting to record in real time exactly how this is. Remember, we are now connected via USB 1.1. This is the kind of USB port that for computers, as this computer made in the year 2000, this is what it would have had. Notice how I'm cleverly killing time while this continues to transfer.
Just hit past the two minute mark. Anybody out there still with me? I, I think it's it's good to actually have a record of what, on, on video, of what USB 1.1 was really like. And once you got to a, a point of certain revisions, you could boot up external drives, USB 1.1. Good Lord, how slow that must have been. People have forgotten FireWire now. Even back in the day, I never really used FireWire that much. But then again, most of the computing I did, USB 2, had already appeared on the scene. FireWire 800, of course, would be a substantial improvement. Now, there is supposed to be a PCI expansion card uh, that would add the four USB 2 ports and a couple of FireWire 800 ports. That would be pretty darn valuable. However, they have become very difficult to find. As we pass the four minute mark, now it's zipping ahead a little bit, that's something. And it slows up again. Now into less than a minute. Is it going to get this done? just gone over five minutes. I would start singing or something, but I think I'll leave that for another video. Down to seconds. And it appears to be choking. got to be finishing up. It's got to be. And there we go. For posterity, six minutes, 24.45 seconds. Now, to make it a more scientific test, I should repeat these over and over again. I have, in fact, done them before, certainly. Uh, but this would probably be about right. The listed speeds of transfer to USB 1.1 is actually only 12 
uh, megabits per second. Whereas the listed speed of USB 2.0 is 480. Now you can do the math there. You know, we ended up, as I said, with uh, under 24 seconds on USB 2 and a little under 6 minutes 25 seconds on USB 1.1. But it shows. Be thankful for what you have. Compared to USB 3, USB 2 is just painfully slow, but here's the champion of slow. All right, well, thank you very much.